Ah, it's close. Ayun. Close. So, straight tayo. <laughs> Picture. Pwede naman tayong magbasa. into the tower by the river. Uh, uh, rather than using the unsafe roads around London, often inhabited by rogues and vagabonds, you'd steal the provisions and then more often than not, they would just set the prisoners free. Now the term traitor's gate didn't come about until the Tudor period, because it was at that time when the tower was mainly used as a state prison. Now during that period of history, four queens of England which went to the tower by a traitor's gate. Queen Anne Boleyn, Queen Catherine Howard, Lady Jane Grey, and the young Princess Elizabeth, soon to go on to become Queen Elizabeth I. Now the four of them, three of them are still here, buried within the confines of the tower. They were never given the option to leave. Now above Traitor's Gate, ladies and gentlemen, we've got St Thomas's Tower, also built during the same period, called St Thomas's Tower because it's named after St Thomas of Becket, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who was murdered in Canterbury Cathedral on the orders of King Henry II. Inside is the medieval palace. So if you wish to visit the medieval palace later on, the entrance is just at the top of these stairs here to my left. If you have to walk through the medieval palace, that will bring you across this bridge here known as Salvin's Bridge into the upper Wakefield Tower behind you there. And that will then lead you on to the southern, eastern and northern ramparts of the tower. And they're all open for you to visit once we finish this tour a little later on. Right, now behind you there, ladies and gentlemen, we have the infamous Bloody Tower. And again, it wasn't always called the Bloody Tower. We used to call it the Garden Tower. We changed the name for marketing reasons. <laughs> no, that's not true. It gets its name from Shakespeare's play, Richard III, where he tells the story of the alleged murder of the two boy princes. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the story, it goes something like this. King Edward IV had just died. He had died leaving behind two young sons. The 12-year-old uncrowned Edward V and his younger nine-year-old brother, Richard, Duke of York. Now, because the young Edward was deemed too young to rule the country, they were put under the care and protection of their uncle, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, who had the boys brought here to the tower for their own protection. And as soon as they were here, he had the boys declared illegitimate. With the boys out of the way, funnily enough, that made Uncle Richard the first in line for the throne. And he was soon crowned King Richard III. Now, shortly after his coronation, the boys disappeared. They were never seen alive again. Richard, he died fighting a few years later at the Battle of Bosworth Field in the year 1485. Shortly after the battle, some men came forward and actually admitted to murdering the boys whilst they lay sleeping in a bedchamber behind that top window. Now, they said they'd smothered the boys in their sleep. They bundled their young bodies down the staircase and covered them over with a pile of stones. The next day, an unknown priest came, he took the bodies away and he buried them underneath the staircase inside the White Tower. And there they lay, undiscovered, for 191 years. So some workmen working on the staircase and covered a box. Now they probably thought they found hidden treasure, but you can imagine their horror and dismay when they opened that box to find the bones of two young children. Now experts at the time immediately declared these must be the bones of the two boy princes. So they were placed in an urn that was designed by Sir Christopher Wren. They were then taken to Westminster Abbey where their young remains were reinterred into Innocent's Court. That is where, ladies and gentlemen, they still lay to this very day. Mm -hmm. 
sarap. Pero pa hindi niyan yung pahaba. Pa Nakita sa iyo pa ganyan. Mata. Pag-anong tayo tayo?